Cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? And you think you're going to get in? No, that? but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac, totally selfish. We have to spend our life on our knees thanking him? What kind of God would do that? Yes, the world is very splendid, but it also has in it insects. <laughs>all right fam so i came across another crazy crazy video now this guy right here okay now this man is powerful okay he is powerful he's filled with knowledge he is super super anointed bro i've been watching like i think i binge watched like three four five of his videos today like this man is like filled with knowledge okay he's super anointed in what he do this guy name is marmari emmanuel excuse me if i'm saying that wrong but basically he answers to an angry atheist so without further ado man if you are an atheist i suggest you stick around to get my thoughts on this opinion and how i feel about atheists and why i think an atheist it don't make sense to me but you know just stay around for my opinion or whatnot but without further ado i just stutter like crazy but without further ado they get it let go you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him? I'll say bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? And you think you're going to get in? No, like that? but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac, totally selfish. We have to spend our life on our knees thanking him. What kind of God would do that? Yes, the world is very splendid, but it also has in it insects whose whole life cycle is to burrow into the eyes of children and make them blind. They eat outwards from the eyes. Why? Why did you do that to us? You could easily have made a, a creation which that didn't exist. It is simply not acceptable. It's perfectly apparent that he is monstrous and deserves no respect whatsoever. The moment you banish him, your life becomes simpler, purer, cleaner, more worth living. I'll give you an example. An atheist will come and attack a Christian with this common question. You Christian believe that your God is all love and all powerful. Our reply will be yes, because that's the truth. Our God is all love and all powerful. Okay, then how come this God of yours, who is all love and all powerful, allowing for evil, to infiltrate and expand so rapidly on a global level. Where is his all power? Where is his all love to come and save and put an end to this evilness? Now this question that is asked by an atheist attacking a Christian has an element of assumption. So I'll answer the questioner with a question, not an answer. So I'll ask you, my dear friend, when you assume there is evil, Aren't you also assuming there is good? Because if they say there is no good, then I'll ask them, how did you know this is evil if you hadn't seen good? How do you know it is dark if you hadn't seen the light? How do you know it's night if you've never seen the day? So when you assume there is evil, aren't you also assuming there is good? They will say yes. Well, when you are assuming there is also good, aren't you also assuming there is a moral law? Because if there is no moral law, how did you know this was good and this was evil? Yep. They will say yes. So since you're assuming there is a moral law, aren't you also assuming there is a moral law giver, which is God whom you are denying? Since you're denying the existence of God, since there is no moral law giver, there is no moral law. Since there is no moral law, there is no good. Since there is no good, there is no evil. Then what's your question? Yeah. See, the moment we take God out of the equation, everything becomes nothing. Yeah. So next time they speak, I'll say, who's talking? Because I don't know who you are. Yeah. When we deny the very identity which is given by the Almighty God to every human being, male and female, then who are you? Who am I addressing? 
you chose. I didn't choose. And I am not attacking you for what you've chosen. You're free. Everyone is free as to what they wish to be, what they wish to have, and what they wish to say or do. You're free. But the consequences of that, you alone are responsible for it. It is not my obligation to be part of that. So you choose that kind of a life, go for it. But when you impose it on me, definitely I will not accept it. Wow. Bro, y'all see what I mean? Mar Mari Emmanuel. The man is anointed. He is anointed, bro. This is how I feel about when it this is how I feel about atheism. I I feel as if I understand that a lot of people don't believe in God because they see the things that happen in this world. They see all the evil. They see all these these different things. And it's like, man, if there was such a loving God, then why is he not stopping the evil? I have two words for you. Free will. Free will. Imagine someone stopping you every single time you want to do something to harm another person. You wouldn't feel like you have that free will. God give us free will to choose and do whatever actions we choose and want to do. We are all born into a fallen world. You know what I'm saying? So we all have desires that are not of God. You know what I'm saying? But like I always say, your desires are sinful. But when you act on those desires, you know what I'm saying? You're going against the will of God. You can always say, because the Bible say, cast out every imagination. So even when I have a desire that's against God, even when I have an impure thought that's against God, I cast it down and I make it obedient to Christ. You know what I'm saying? But if I was a person that wanted to harm another person because they harmed someone I love, you know what I'm saying? In my generation, we call it an op. If I wanted to harm another op and God stopped me every single time I wanted to harm that person, I will get mad. I will be frustrated because I want to let my anger out. I'll have the desire to harm this person. You keep stopping me. That's not him giving me the free will to do what I please to do. But just know your free will, there will be consequences that come that come towards you when you obligate in things that are against you. God. So if you go out there and you harm another person, best believe you're going to be in jail. Best believe there's going to be some type of level of consequence for doing something outside the will of God. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know, we all consciously know what is wrong and what is good. We know it's wrong to go harm another person. We know it's wrong. It's like God has placed this God has placed, like he said, the moral law. Like we know these things. It's we born to know. You know what I'm saying? That this stuff is wrong. We born to know that this stuff is wrong. You feel me? And I just feel like a lot of people, they forget that we have that free will. They forget that we're obligated to do anything. But just know that the Bible tells us that church, you can do anything, but not everything is beneficial. You can do anything, but not everything is good. Not everything is wise. You know what I'm saying? You have to be wise and use your discernment to know what you should and what you shouldn't do. You feel me? And atheists, they always talk about the evil this and the evil that and how this is that this way and this way and god is this and god is that but i always will just want to bring up the question have you ever gave god truly a try you know what i'm saying like you you see what's around us but the bible tells us that the devil is the prince of all of this bro the devil is the prince of all of this. this world is falling bro it is falling the devil is controlling the music industry and us believers in Christ are trying to bring the things that the devil has perverted. We're trying to bring those things back to what God created it for. That's why God called so many Christian people to rap or so many Christian people to make music or he called in the Christian community to come into the social media feed and change the game, change it up. Bring it back to his glory because everywhere you look on social media, somebody flexing all the money, somebody flexing the big booty women, somebody flexing all this. You see so much, you see so much corn. You feel me? When I say corn, I'm talking about 
adult stars. You see so much of that on Twitter. You can see that on Instagram. It's it's so perverted. You know what I'm saying? And the devil is trying to use the things God created for good, and he's trying to pervert it. He's trying to turn our minds. That's why so many kids, I believe kids shouldn't have social media and things like that because I know what I see on social media on a day-to-day basis. I'm on social media right now because the if I want to take this detox and cleanse, and cleanse my mind from all the things that I have put in my eyes, put in my eye gate that I have seen on social media. You know what I'm saying? But again, like I said, you have to come to God and know God for yourself. You feel me? When I look around the world, I look at all the evil, but I also look at the good. I also look at the good around the world. And then when I when I have a personal relationship with God, I look at the good that he's doing in my life. It may be a time where I may lose somebody close to me, that time that I may do this and do that. But because I love his word and because I believe in his word, I could just trust on his word and I could look at other people that went through the same struggles that I went through and I can look at that story and be like, man, if God came through for them, I know he could come through for me. You know what I'm saying? We got to continue. We got to stop looking at what's around us. You feel me? What's around us? Yes, it's a lot of evil, but everybody has the free will to do whatever they choose to do. God is not going to intervene every time you want to do something. If you want to do that, he's going to, he's going to give you the free will. He's going to give you the free will to do that. But just know the day that you die, the time that you die, if you don't come into repentance, you will meet, you will meet the wrath of God. You will. You have to come into repentance. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you can do everything, but not everything is wise and everything is beneficial and everything is good for you. However, when you come into repentance and you say, Lord, no matter what you done did, you can go kill somebody. But if you come into repentance and have a change of heart and truly change your attitude towards God and truly change your heart, allow him to change you from the inside out, you can now be in a relationship with Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the that's the forgiveness and grace that God has. And that same forgiveness and grace that he has, the same forgiveness and grace I have for everyone else. Murderers, thieves, kill, whatever. I have that, gr- that grace and forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel when it comes to atheism. You know what I'm saying? I just feel as if a lot of atheists, they 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 talk about the evil and they talk about this and they talk about the the if God is so loving, why is these things happening, this and that. A loving God, a loving parent, a loving what like a loving person in general will allow you. They they will they will allow you to to have the free will to do what you choose to do. But they also would tell you what's right and what's wrong and what you shouldn't do. But they will allow you to go out there and you can either take their wisdom or you can deny their wisdom. It's like what our parents. Our parents would tell us to do a lot of things. And they would tell us what we shouldn't do, but we would still go out there and they would allow us to have our free will. So the moment we turn 18 and we leave their house and we are on our own, now we have our free will. And some of us go against what our parents told us. Some of us actually listen and we follow on some good paths and some good soil and some good seeds. But then again, we still have that free will. And sometimes we fall and bump our head. We fall and bump our head and we do the things that our parents told us not to do. God shows us and tells us what we should and shouldn't do. It's all in his word. And also it's all in our spirit. Our spirit is connected to God, whether you believe it or not. You can't sell your soul. All that is all that is inside is connected to him. That's why we know what is good and what is evil. You know what I'm saying? You can't know what is good and what is evil if you're not connected to the one who have place in us what is good and what is evil you get what i'm trying to say i hope you guys enjoyed this video man <laughs> i hope that y'all understood what i was trying to say i felt like like i don't know like i i, I was trying to <laughs> i don't know bro like at times when i get to talking about the lord man i just man, i just be on a flow i'll be on a roll but uh, yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications. Being your boy, The Pen. I love each and every one of y'all, bro. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.